ultimately, we have just one moral duty to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves, more and more peace, and to reflect it towards others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will be in our troubled world. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths. I am often literally fed up with myself. I find this inner life overpowering. I would like to be able to live in an entirely different way. I have a deep-rooted fear that love will turn into a relationship with all its obligations and restrictions. What is at stake is our impending future and the meaning we give to the word life. I shall try to help you, God, to stop my strength ebbing away, though I cannot vouch for it in advance. There is a really deep well inside me, and in it dwells God. Sometimes I am there too. But more often, stones and grit block the well, and God is buried beneath. Then he must be dug out again. Ultimately, we are all a little blind and deaf. That is why we always find ourselves in the wrong. And I believe that there is something holy about everything, and that words can play no part in it. And so life just batters away at me, and I respond, and sooner or later, I will become whole and will be with God, all of God. One of the most difficult things is not to change society, but to change yourself. In the knowledge that I am complete with all my imperfections, I am complete. It is an art to be in love with life and yet not feel hurt by it. Every experience leaves a residue in us. Everything we go through in life brings us a little further towards a final destination. The best way to find out what we really need is to get rid of what we don't need. In this life, we must be prepared to waste nothing, throw nothing away, pass nothing by. I can give myself a fair amount of rest and then I don't have to demand it from others. I know what weak people are, what strong people are, and what dictates our actions and reactions. Love is not a matter of looking at each other, but of looking together in the same direction. Ultimately, we are all a little blind and deaf. What is at stake is our impending future and the meaning we give to the word life and we shall continue to find solace for ourselves, not in shared acts of heroism, but in small daily acts of love. I feel like a bird in a cage whose wings have been amputated, and yet I keep hoping I will be able to fly. I am free, that's the main thing. We must accept our burdens gracefully, for when the student takes his examination, he cannot complain about the questions asked. All we can do is do our work and then wait for the miracle to descend. I often think I'm not really living, just observing myself from a distance. God, I am trying to find you amidst these circumstances. One cannot simply listen to the world. One must respond. It's a strange thing. But when you are dreading something and would give anything to slow down time, it has a disobliging habit of speeding up. Sometimes the suffering seems to overwhelm the beauty. It is the best and only thing that moves one forward. I find life beautiful and I feel free. The sky within me is as wide as the one stretching above my head. I should like to be at least a small footnote in that story. We should be willing to act as a balm to the wounds of the world. It all depends on what one expects of life. The more precisely you try to grab hold of the moment, the more elusive it becomes. I will not leave it to others to be the good and noble in my place. God, help me. Give me the strength to live to cast aside all bitterness, 
to fight for what is beautiful and to help that beauty take root. I must not dwell on things that are futile, nor allow what is beautiful and good to be blighted. All men are sons of God and should make a proper effort to live up to the divine image within them.